<clears throat> you you spoke Cherokee at home? Uh, actually, Cherokee was my first language growing up. Um, I didn't learn to speak English until I was like um, five, six, maybe seven years old. And that was one of the, uh, the hard things about being in a public school. Um, a lot of times um, we were punished for speaking Cherokee in class. And um, it, it, it's just one of those things that reminds me this was only just a few years ago in time. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, but we were allowed to speak Cherokee out there in recess time out on the, on the grounds. Um, I remember uh, some of my cousins getting whipped. And even I, I got a, a little bit of discipline, um, which was very traumatic to you know, when you're young like that. Did you have any extended family, uncles, or anybody who painted? Uh, actually, uh, none of my uh, uncles uh, were uh, in uh, in that area, uh, but. Um, uh, I remember um, a distant relative who was uh, always doing some drawings, and his name was Charles Leo Van from Pryor. And uh, every once in a while he would come over. Of course, he was a lot older than I at the time, and already well developed in his talent. And I admired a lot what he did. Uh, today, you can see some of his um, work around Pryor, Salina. Was that maybe your first examples of Indian art that you saw? Well, uh, that was my first example of something that a uh, developed artist did that was quality work. And that really, really impressed me. And uh, years later, uh, uh, it was an honor to meet um, a uh, upcoming artist from Muskogee, Oklahoma. And his name was Jerome Tiger. And he and his agent, Nettie Wheeler, had a big impact on my, on my development into, to the point where I am today. And uh, Jerome was probably one of the biggest, the most important influence. That's interesting, because I think you both sort of have that same love of anatomy, you know, the, the rendering of the human body in this uh, very uh, beautiful way. Um, how did you meet Jerome the first time? Well, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of um, one of those uh, things where um, um, a, a young kid my age uh, in grade school um, had a hard time at that time. Uh, being in class. <laughs> uh, we walked like about several miles to, um, to school back in those days, um, uh, by choice actually. Uh, that was, uh, then I, and then later on uh, we uh, got a regular school bus to, to ride in, but before then it was kind of like a ranch truck that <laughs> used to come and pick us up. But uh, since school was not that far, we, we walked to school. Sometimes we got there, <laughs> <laughs> and most of the times uh, we didn't, and uh, so uh, social workers uh, were um, out to help children my age uh, to give more of a direction as a lot of these programs that was coming up back at that time. Uh, and uh, I'd like to uh, go back down to, to the time of uh, John F. Kennedy's time. Um, he started um, a, a lot of uh, tech schools back in those days. There was only, I think, about three at the time. If, if, uh, if I'm wrong, you know, some, you know, correct me. But uh, uh, they were uh, job corps centers, and um, so this um, uh, social worker came over to the house one time and said that um, I was reported as being a problem student, you know, and uh, there's an option that you can take, uh, either Job Corps or, uh, and I also know that you 
uh, have this talent, and also I'm acquainted or heard of uh, this lady in Muskogee, and uh, that could help you. So um, she um, took me over to Muskogee to the Thunderbird gift shop, met uh, Mary Jane Wheeler, and she said, uh, this is what I'm doing with Jerome Tiger. I'd never heard of the name before until then. And she named other known artists of those times and before, named A.C. Blue Eagle and uh, Paul Positopa and all those kind of guys. Never heard of them. Uh, so uh, she said that uh, this is what I'm helping them do and I'd like to develop you and, and Jerome is willing to, to meet you and help you with it too. So uh, we did and um, uh, Jerome was one of the uh, most fantastic person that I had ever met. Uh, he, he, some of the things that he was doing I was just like at awe. I thought he was, I mean, like a god. <laughs> <laughs> Even though Jerome was Creek, he was not Cherokee. Mm -hmm. uh, we both uh, resonated extremely well. He said, you have something that I see that you can develop. And he, he told me that, um, that you have to do it on your own way. Don't copy me, is what he said. Well, everybody did at that time. <laughs> and uh, that went over very well for um, uh, for about uh, maybe a couple of seasons, I believe it was, and then I was still having that problem in school, so I looked at uh, Job Corps. <laughs> Had you been meeting with Jerome uh, over at Nettie's or going over there about once a week? Was yes, uh, uh -huh. uh, I did. Um, I did go on to Job Corps. I went up to Anaconda, Montana. I was there for two two years. Uh, uh, two years. I want to say maybe two months, maybe three, uh, for for uh, whatever you wanted to learn, they they taught you there. Uh, so I learned heavy equipment and uh, maintenance, and I got under GED at the time. And then I came back from Job Corps and um, and started right back up with Nay and Jerome at the time. Um, and uh, right after that, uh, Jerome passed away, mm. which uh, was uh, been very hard you know, on you. Very, very devastating to me, because I admire him so much that he, today. Uh, his memory is has a very big, big impact on me. Mm -hmm. Were you at that point, Donald, uh, about seventeen or? 16. No, no, actually, okay. um, uh, I was going on 15 then. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> uh, so I went back to high school, um, even though I had a GED, <laughs> uh, graduated, technically graduated in 68, but I had to take a half a year over again to graduate. And uh, by that time, uh, I was working full-time as a professional artist in 